They might be the oldest mystery in the Stargate universe. The Furlings are an advanced species who long ago were members of an alliance of four great races in the galaxy, along with the Asgard, the Nox, and the Ancients. Jack O'Neill first learned the name of the Furlings all the way back in the second season of Stargate SG-1. The fifth race aired in January 1999, showing us the grand scale of Stargate's mythology and the depth of its history, and also the astonishing possibilities that lie ahead for Earth. But what about the Furlings? Over the years we would come to learn plenty about the other three great races. What about this other advanced, presumably powerful species that once walked our stars? Where are they? And why, over the course of more than a decade of exploration, did SG-1 hardly ever come across any evidence of their existence? In this video, we're running down everything we know about the Furlings from the in-canon universe. We'll also take a peek at some non-canonical sources and add a dose of speculation about why the Furlings have managed to keep a low profile for so many years. Number one, the Furlings were part of an ancient alliance. We first learned of their existence from the Asgard. His brain overloaded with information from the ancient repository of knowledge, Jack O'Neill managed to gate to a distant alien colony in the Ida galaxy, where the Asgard could remove the data and save his life. Here, Jack learned the names to go along with that old alliance, a United Nations of the Stars, first discovered on the planet nicknamed Heliopolis. That's in the first season episode, The Torment of Tantalus. We knew that four races had once gathered there, utilizing the basic elements of the periodic table to build a universal language. We even had samples of all four of their written languages, carved into the walls of the Heliopolis meeting hall. Only now, though, in season two's The Fifth Race, did we learn the name of the Furlings. SG-1 had already met the Nox in the Asgard, and had already speculated that one of the other races, not the Goa'uld, had built the Stargate network. That alliance existed many thousands of years ago, if not more, likely before the Goa'uld came to dominate the Milky Way. We don't know what they did, but they probably shared knowledge, perhaps even helped to cultivate the evolution of younger races. We know that the alliance eventually dissolved. The ancients moved on from this region of space. A reference either to their migration to the Pegasus galaxy millions of years ago, we saw that in Rising, the Atlantis pilot, or maybe it's a reference to their ascension, which wasn't millions of years ago, but rather thousands of years ago. If it was the latter, then the Alliance wasn't all that long ago. So the Furlings have only been missing for thousands of years, not millions of years. Number two, the Furlings lived on at least one planet in the Milky Way. Although no teams from Stargate Command have ever encountered the Furlings face to face, SG-1 did locate a single planet with evidence that the mysterious race once lived there. On the planet designated P5X777, the team found the well-preserved remains of an ancient temple. Inside was advanced technology still in working order. More on that in a minute. In the Season 6 episode, Paradise Lost, SG-1 finds that P5X777 is no longer inhabited. Based on what the team found there, it's reasonable to conclude that the Furlings were there hundreds of years ago, maybe thousands of years ago. Again, if it had been millions of years ago, it's likely that the stone architecture here would have crumbled to dust. So was this once the Furlings' homeworld? Or perhaps only one of many colonies? just as the Ancients and their descendants populated many different worlds throughout the Milky Way galaxy. What's maybe most striking here is that this is the one and only planet where evidence of Furling civilization was ever found. That's after a decade of two dozen SG teams exploring hundreds of different planets. That sparsity seems conspicuous. It might suggest that the Furlings originated on this planet and didn't spread out to other worlds. Or it might imply that they weren't even originally from this galaxy. 777 may have served as their outpost in the Milky Way. Number three, they have transportation technology. Any species that is reckoned among the four great races of the galaxy is likely going to be technologically advanced and to a significant degree. It's not too far a stretch to suppose that the Furling's advancement was roughly on par with the others in the Alliance. The Furlings might be spacefaring and would have something to offer to the other member races. 
On P5X777, SG-1 discovered the one and only piece of furling technology ever found, a large archway, which when activated can transport people across great distances. In this case, the arch connected to the planet's nearby moon, which was also inhabited long ago. While it's possible that that transportation arch can go other places as well, we do know that the technology needs a key in order to be activated. And it's not a simple on-off switch. The key activates a control panel where certain symbols need to be dialed in a particular order. It was also programmed to filter out weapons made by the Goa'uld, preventing these weapons from being brought into the colony. Curiously, one of these keys was discovered on Earth. It was buried in the tomb of an Egyptian pharaoh. This little historical nugget implies some sort of connection to the Goa'uld, perhaps to Ra, the supreme system lord, who ruled Earth from Egypt, where the Stargate was located, some five millennia ago. Did Ra take the key device from a living furling? Or did the furlings themselves visit Earth and leave the key there, under some unknown circumstances? Number four, some furlings may have pursued a utopian society. On that moon orbiting P5X777, a particular community of people once dwelt. They lived a simple life, evidently out of doors and with no evident technology to speak of. They also left invitations for others to come and join them. And it was this that brought Harry Mayborn to the moon in the episode Paradise Lost. This colony apparently came to an end when, as Jack hypothesizes, the Goa'uld brought an edible plant to the moon, which drove everyone mad with paranoia. It should be said first that the people who lived on the utopian moon may not have been furlings themselves. Based on the skeletal remains, at least some of these colonists were humanoid. The furlings might or might not be humanoid. Because the utopians apparently left instructions on how to find them, it's entirely possible that members of many different races lived there. Maybe that skeleton did not belong to a furling at all. Jack O'Neill also discovered evidence that the Utopia was infiltrated by the Goa'uld, who may have played a role in further advancing the downfall of this Utopian society. It seems reasonable to conclude that the Furlings originally founded the Utopian colony, even as they opened it up to many other races. Or they may not have lived there themselves, only gifting their arch technology to the natives. The presence of Furling technology here on this planet seems to provoke more questions than it answers. Number five, they're probably not teddy bears. Contrary to popular belief, brought up on screen by just about everybody who hears their name out loud, we have no reason to believe that the furlings are actually furry. They almost certainly do not resemble Ewoks or oversized koala bears, though the one time they were depicted on screen, that's exactly what they looked like. The Furling's appearance on Stargate SG-1's 200th episode depicts an incident that in fact never happened. It's a story being spun in the conference room as Martin Lloyd is looking to SG-1 for some inspiration for his new wormhole extreme sci-fi movie. In truth, SG-1 never found a colony of furry Furlings, and that planet was never attacked by gold ships or destroyed in a fiery explosion. It was a fun nod from the writers to the show's fans, who had been pestering the powers that be for eight years about the Furlings. Not only did we finally get to quote-unquote meet the legendary race, but as it turns out, they really are cute and fuzzy after all. And then they all get blown up. Now, a bit more speculation about the Furlings from non-canon sources. Sources outside of Stargate's canon occasionally make reference to the Furlings. The Stargate SG-1 role-playing game was published by Alderac Entertainment in 2003. The RPG suggests that the Furlings in fact helped to seed the Madronans, hinting that the touchstone weather control device that the Madronans possess might be Furling technology. Now the Furlings were to be more further developed in the MMORPG game Stargate Worlds. That game was never completed, but some of its story details have leaked out over the years, and GateWorld has gotten indications from Brad Wright and Robert C. Cooper that the intention was for Stargate World's story to be official canon. So take that as you will, the game was never finished, it was never published. But in Stargate Worlds, the Furlings are said to have created the Goa'uld, or perhaps helped in their evolution. 
in the hope of creating a caretaker species for the Milky Way galaxy. But the Goa'uld turned on them, corrupting the furlings and using their DNA to create an offshoot species called the Stragus. The Stragus were to feature in the game. It's not canon, but it's a wild and really interesting idea. So finally, where are the furlings now? Well, there's three possibilities, and the writers of future Stargate stories could certainly pick up on this loose thread. One possibility is that the furlings are extinct. Like the Asgard, perhaps they faced some biological problem of their own making. For the Asgard, it was reproduction by cloning. Or maybe it was a disaster of a technological nature. Again, like the Asgard, who were nearly wiped out by the replicators. If this theory is right, we haven't met any furlings because there aren't any. Second, it may be that the furlings retreated to their own corner of the galaxy and just have no interest in the affairs of others. This was the strategy of the Nox. Whether it is born from xenophobia or just disinterest in the younger races, they might be out there, living out their days on a distant planet not discovered by Earth. Maybe it's one without a Stargate. Third and finally, when the Alliance dissolved and faded into distant history, maybe the Furlings chose the path of the Alterans, the Ancients. Maybe they just moved on from our region of space settling in a new galaxy, such as the Andromeda Galaxy, which hasn't been explored in Stargate canon yet. As far as we know, Earth has never sent a ship that way, nor would a galaxy untouched by the Ancients have any Stargates at all. Stargate Worlds reportedly also intended to introduce the idea that the Furlings are extra-dimensional beings. Maybe if they left our region of space, they also retreated from our dimension. In any case, the legend of the Furlings lives on, and presents a big opening for telling new stories. Will we have a chance to learn more about the Furlings within the Stargate universe? Maybe even see them one day? Stick with GateWorld for our continuing coverage of Stargate's past, present, and its future. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and visit us online at GateWorld.net.